everyone. Happy Monday. Happy Motivational Monday. I hope you had a fantastic weekend with your family. For any of you guys that are new to my videos, my name is Sarah. I'm an exercise physiologist and nutritionist, but I specialize in helping mothers find their healthy balance and rock their mom bod with confidence. So if you are watching on the replay, thank you very much. Drop where you are watching from. Let me know if you are a beginner, intermediate, advanced level exerciser. If you scroll through my feed, you'll find a lot of different routines that I've posted throughout quarantine, some before, some after. We're, we're kind of still in the quarantine you know, stage, but for everyone watching on the live, thank you very much. Now, we're switching it up today. For those of you that follow my Monday night educational whiteboard Mondays, we're gonna do more of that tomorrow, but it's gonna be a mindset over educational, so hopefully that's okay with you, but I think we tend to get so consumed in the facts that we need to go back to this sometimes. So, we're gonna focus on that tomorrow, and I don't know exactly what time it's gonna be, but it's gonna be in the evening, so hopefully you can tune into that. And if you guys are not aware, you can turn on live notifications, so if you follow me, uh, go up to the area where you can turn on live notifications, okay? And so I just got done with my workout and I wanted to hop on here and talk about core engagement. This is something that I think is way overlooked. I think that you can get, well I know, you can get six pack abs without ever doing any exact spot on targeting of the abs, okay? I repeat, you do not need to do any straight on abdominal exercises in order to get six pack abs. How do I know this is true? Because I rarely do abdominals myself, and I have a lot of clients that rarely do abdominals themselves and still have abs to show for it. The reason being, you are aware of your breathing and you're contracting, okay? So, when you're doing any exercise, you should always be aware of your core engagement. I know I'm wearing some high-waisted, so I'll pull it down so you can kind of see. Okay, so, when your core is not engaged, and honestly, I don't try to flex all day, but when you're flexing, that helps in so many different ways. Supporting your lower back, it helps prevent injury, it helps contraction, which in turn eventually gives you the six pack abs, okay? So if you're doing something like bicep curls and you're just letting my belly hang, and your breathing is not intact with your core, you're supposed to be blowing out on the exertion, contracting your abs. See the difference? My core's tight, right here it's not. And you're, you feel the difference when you have that contraction. And the contraction should be the same feeling as <coughs> you're coughing, you're contracting, not sucking in my stomach. We shouldn't see ribs, we should be contracting. Okay, so you should have that going on regardless of what you're doing, okay? So locking the core when you're doing squats. See how my core's locked? My core's engaged. <sighs> Breathing from the core, not... See, there's a big difference here. From the side, not... And see how you're kind of tucking your tummy in? <laughs> That's the feeling of contraction, okay? It's once you get it, then you get it, okay? But I want you to focus on literally just standing up, contracting. I tell my clients all the time, if you are able to contract and isolate, you can literally stand here and just do standing crunches. You're gonna get so much more out of that than on the ground with some kind of crazy leg lift movement or you're at the gym and you're on this contraption that you're pulling down and you're twisting and you're just focused on moving the weight and you're pulling and you're lifting and you're doing all these movements, but you're doing so much that you lose focus on what we're working, okay? And your breathing is not coinciding with the contracting it all needs to come together. It all needs to work for the common good. And if your goal is to get that definition, 
then you need to work on the breathing and contracting and slow down the movements, okay? It's not about how many movements you can get. It's not about how fast you can get through it. It's not about how much weight you can push. No one cares about that. I know when you're younger, you think like everyone's watching me. Everyone knows if I'm weak or strong or no. People care about what they're doing. They don't care about what you're doing. I hate to tell you. They don't. They don't. Can I get an amen to that? That's something that you learn when you get a little bit older. Or maybe they do care and you at that point should not care. Don't worry about what all the other people are doing. You focus on yourself, okay? And when you start doing that, it's amazing what things can happen. Okay, so another thing I want to show you when you're doing this contracting, if you're like Sarah, doing that, is really not doing anything for me. Add a little bit of resistance. Grab a resistance band, hold it right here, lock your arms, and. But notice, my movement isn't like all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. I mean, I've seen some crazy things. The smaller the movement with anything you're doing, whether it's core, it's biceps, it's lower body, the pulsing, the slow contracting is always going to get you much more than doing further range of motion and so much more going on, okay? So contracting, you're going to get more out of doing this than doing, you know? So if you're like sitting on a ball and you see people doing those crunches on the ball, I'll show you, okay? Let's just show you. Because I think that a lot of people think the more movement, the better. And it's just not the case. And I, you know, I've learned over the, I've learned over the last 19 years of me doing this. You guys, I'm almost 37. Can you believe it? Oh, okay, so I see a lot of people doing this. They're doing crunches, and they're doing that. Nip, 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 nip. Okay, what you want to do, first of all, you want to have a little bit of space to where you're unstable, okay? Because that's when you actually tense the core without even realizing it because you don't want to fall off the ball, right? So you're starting here, and you're going to go down and then crunch up. This is it. This is the range of motion for most isolation and contraction. That's it, okay? You should never come all the way up. And you should never go all the way back because that back and that up point in time is giving you a rest that is allowing your core to rest. We don't want to allow that. We want to keep the burn alive because at the end of the day, burning is sculpting and shorter movements. Same thing. I'm doing squats. Okay. Not that tough. Okay. Well, I'm doing slow pulses, keeping the isolation on the hamstrings and the glutes and the quads. You better believe it's going to burn a little bit more, okay? But I'm also keeping my core engaged, breathing throughout, breathing on the exertion, which is the, the tougher part of the movement. And you guys, it will be a game changer all day long. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is the vacuum twisting. I did a video on vacuum twisting a while ago. So I'll pull it down. And what you're going to do Hands up. This is something that a lot of people do for diastasis recti. I have an abdominal separation. It's almost a one and a half finger, two finger now. So, and I can't help it. I do training, I do videos, so I'm not technically supposed to do a lot of direct work on my core, which I don't, unless I'm doing workout videos for you all. So I just blame you guys. I blame you guys for this gap, but you know what? It came from my daughter, so I wouldn't have anything different from it. So anyhow, you can do this movement whether you've had a child or not, but it's supposed to correct abdominal separation and in turn helps work your abs, okay? So it's all about breathing. Hands up, you wanna tuck your belly in and you wanna blow your air out first. You're holding your breath as you do this and you're twisting, okay? So you wanna twist, you wanna hold your breath, and you want to twist as many times as you can while holding your breath. So probably about 10 to 15. Breathe, recover, right into the next, okay? So let's do it.
side. And you can see after you start breathing, you can see it's working. It is working. I have so many people that tell me, Sarah, I stopped doing my abdominal routines. I started doing only the contracting and the breathing and your vacuum twisting. Now I can see abdominals. Okay, that, I have to say, that coupled with nutrition is going to get you to act. If you're chowing down on Mickey D's and raising canes every day and you're doing all this, I'm not sure anything is going to be visible. I just can't really tell you. Because we all know, or we should know, that nutrition is a majority of the equation. Okay? All right. I have a client coming. I think I, sh I owe her a shower. I think so. So I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you have a fantastic Monday. Remember, tomorrow night we're doing mindset, mindset training because, you know what, when this changes, opportunities galore galore and when this is just in the crapper your life might be as well i hate to say it it's really not funny but it's kind of funny how when you do switch everything around up here everything around you changes too we're gonna leave on that note make it a good monday drop some love in the comments and i'll talk to you later